Okay guys, quick heads up about today's show. While what we're gonna talk about isn't directly about real estate, it does impact it greatly. So don't bust our chops because it isn't specifically about real estate. Well, I guess it is, but it's more from a 10,000 foot level. It affects so much more than real estate. So let's just get right into it. If our traditional indicators are right, then it would be fair to say that our economy is growing. After all, the stock market's rising, properties are flying off the shelf, and our 401ks are making money instead of losing money. So it makes sense, right? Well, not so much. Remember, the stock market can rise even if the economy is doing bad. How so? Well, let's not forget the bursting of the stock market bubble and the bursting of the housing bubble. Overall, the stock market rose while these events occurred. Maybe took a few dips, but overall recovered, and more importantly, the GDP continued to grow. Now, our collective mistake back then and now is misinterpreting these numbers and thinking this signifies a good, strong, growing economy. It's not. It's an illusion. A phony economy built on debt. Jobs were and are being created due to the massive amounts of play money changing hands in America, and it all started in our industry. You know, folks pulling out 50K here and 50K there to buy this and that. It was and is bubble economics. And the worst part, the absolute worst part, we are doing it again. And don't get it twisted, guys. We haven't learned from our mistakes. This phony economy, this one right now, is built on mainly government debt. It's not a housing or a stock market bubble. It's a government finance bubble. We have all this spending and all this printing of money by the government, so it appears, important word here, appears that the economy is improving. But the big problem here, the really big problem, we actually have to pay that money back. So what happens when you actually have to pay the money back? Well, all the prosperity, jobs, and stocks that were associated with this finance prosperity, they go the way of the housing market. The results will be the same. It's just another bubble, and just like the stock market bubble and the housing bubble, all that fabricated success evaporates into thin air because that's what it is. Thin air. Fabricated success to prop up a severely crippled economy. We've replaced one bubble with a new bubble, from stocks to housing, now to the government finance bubble. We have continued to replace one phony false era of prosperity with another, and this has been going on for quite a while. Case in point, for the last hundred years or so, the public and private sector would borrow about $1.50 for every dollar of GDP growth. This was the golden constant in our nation. It had been that way for about 100 years. By the time we got to the mid-90s, we were borrowing $3 for every $1 of GDP growth. And by the time we got to the peak in 2006 or 7, we were actually taking $6 of new debt to grind out $1 of GDP growth. This is not how we were built. We we're extremely out of whack. The machine is broken. In no way, shape, or form is this sustainable. This is not real consumption or real income. It's bubble economics. It's smoke and mirrors. Growth, recovery, guys, I hate to say it, but even a safe projection of 1.6% of annual GDP growth is overstating what's really going on in our economy. Here's the scary part. Eventually, we won't be able to make these mistakes because, well, we're gonna eventually destroy the dollar because we print so many of them to pay for our past mistakes. We shot a show several months ago and posed this question. What do you do when the antidote that can save you may just kill you? And the answer to that riddle is coming true right in front of our eyes. It kills you, period. It kills you. The antidote? Our antidote has been stimulus from the US government and now we face very severe consequences due to the overstimulus. This antidote's killing the economy. We're not dealing with our problem, we're making them bigger. We've compounded these issues by handing all this personal and bank debt over to the government and they in turn produced more debt rather than getting rid of it. Everybody's complaining about the gas prices going up, but they're happy that their 401ks are going up. It's all for the same reason. When there's so much currency being printed and everybody has money, then the value of the dollar goes down. So to make up for that, you have to charge more for what used to cost less when there wasn't as much money around. Want the price to gas to go down? Well, then you're gonna to have to accept what goes along with that. Lower stock prices, reduction in money supply, and unfortunately, higher interest rates. We're gonna to have to let the recession happen, which is what we've been saying all along. Let it happen naturally. Nature needs to take its course so we can move on finally once and for all. Or we can continue down the same path we're on, but you know in the back of your head what we're saying makes sense, and you know in the back of your head that we're living in a fantasy world right now. So when do we start to grow again? How much and how fast? Well, experts say three to three and a half percent. And while those numbers are nice and modest, they're built on the very same sham of an economy that we just spoke about. So really, I'd be surprised to see half that. 
one to two percent. And when we're finally forced to stop borrowing and spending, then and only then will the merry-go-round stop. At that point, investors will stop buying U.S. investments. After all, people don't want to own U.S. Treasury paper that returns at a rate of only 0.8%. The inflation rate for the past 15 years has been 2.5%. It doesn't make sense. When you pull your money out after 5 to 10 years, you're actually upside down once you account for inflation. Your invested dollar can purchase less than what it could have been when you put your money in. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're all wrong. Heck, maybe you can make the world rich by simply having all the central banks print unlimited money. If that's true, then pfft, we've been doing it wrong since the dawn of time, or at least for the last several thousand years. But the truth is, you can't. No matter how many government officials tell you differently, bubbles burst. They do. This government finance bubble will eventually burst, and the repercussions will be massive. Why will it be massive? Well, remember, this time around, it'll be for the last three bubbles combined, not just our current one. Solution? Takeaway? The real antidote? We have to eat our broccoli for a good period of time. And that means our taxes go up on everybody, not just the rich. It means that we have to stop subsidizing debt by getting a sane set of people back in charge of the Fed and, dare I say, the White House. Not getting political because both sides have got us here. And also, we need to get interest rates back to some kind of level that reflects the risk of holding debt over time and take our lumps. It won't be easy and it won't be quick, but at least it will be real. No more fantasy.